as we go here and there in the scriptures, and I'll probably come back to this one on tomorrow, um, just to give a couple of brief thoughts, but we'll keep things moving in the book of Mark chapter number 6, and we'll begin reading in verse number 42. Mark chapter number 6, and we'll begin reading in verse number 42. Notice the Bible says, and uh, this passage of scripture, in fact, let's go down to verse number 45 just for the sake of time to move things along, and straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and go to the other side before Bethsaida, of which he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And even, uh, and when eve was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them tolling and rolling, rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came unto them walking upon the sea, and would have passed them by. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, uh, they supposed that it had been a spirit, and he cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And went up unto them into the uh, ship, and the wind ceased, and there was sore amazed in themselves be, uh, beyond measure, and wondered. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for the heart was hard. In this passage of scripture, I want to just look this morning at uh, one particular thought, and we'll try to give uh, two or three thoughts and uh, disconnect for this morning from this passage. But I want to speak this morning on the subject matter of troubled waters. Uh, troubled waters. All of us go through troubled waters in our life. And of course, that uh, phrase is symbolic concerning struggles, uh, challenges, sickness, uh, financial setbacks, uh, family issues. Uh, there's all types of things that we could consider this morning as troubled waters uh, in our life. And just because we're Christian, we are not immune to the troubled waters. The Bible said that God makes it to rain on the just and the unjust. Uh, if a sinner gets punched in the nose, he bleeds. But guess what? If a Christian gets punched in the nose, uh, they bleed also. Uh, a sinner has to pay their bills and pay their mortgage payments, their insurance, and their medical bills and things of that nature. But guess what? So do Christians. Uh, it'd be wonderful if we were exempt from those things. I suppose it'd be, there would not be a single sinner left on the planet Earth if uh, they never got sick again, if they were to get saved and never had a bill to pay and never had any troubles or heartaches or sorrows in their life. But the truth of the matter is, uh, heartaches come to all of us, saint and sinner. In fact, when you look at the scripture many times, especially in the New Testament, and many times it's the disciples or those that are believers that face some of the deepest troubled waters uh, in the scripture. Here in this passage of uh, text in the Bible, that certainly is true concerning the disciples. This is not the sinners that Jesus uh, comes to in the, uh, in the boat, uh, walking on the waters, but it's his disciples. I want to give you uh, just a few things and give you some brief thoughts on this text again this morning as we just kind of hit and highlight a few things through the scripture from text to text. But I want you to notice in this passage of scripture that Jesus commanded his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side. And so <clears throat> we find the disciples, they have been obedient to God's command. They're doing exactly what the Lord has commanded them to do. Uh, not knowing what lays before them, and you and I have no idea what lays before us. Uh, sometimes Christians get the uh, philosophy or they adopt the uh, thought pattern that if I serve God, everything's going to be peaches and cream, everything's going to be all rosy, I'll face no problems, no health issues, no financial struggles, no family conflicts, and I'll, everything will just be perfect if we will totally dedicate our lives to the Lord. And I want to say to you that is a farce, that is a false a statement that is a lie straight out of hell itself. Um, we find in the scriptures repeatedly where God's people who serve him, they still face many times conflicts and struggles in their life. But there is a vast contrast between the child of God facing troubled waters and the sinner facing troubled waters. And the difference simply is this, that those of us that have been saved, when we face troubled waters and go through deep valleys in our life, we have the Lord with us. He goes with us yeah. and uh, he, is, he sees us, he strengthens us, and he helps us in those times. David put it this way, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. David was walking through the valley of shadow of death where many had died and many had gone, both uh, saint and sinner, if I could put it that way. And uh, David himself acknowledged that he was going through that uh, deep valley in his life. But the difference was, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. And thank God we have the Lord with us in the midst of our trials. So I want you to notice 
a few things concerning troubled waters. Number one, I want you to notice with me, if you would please, in verse number uh, 48. In verse number 48, it says, And he and the he in this passage of Scripture, of course, is the Lord Jesus. And he saw them, them being the disciples, toiling and toiling and rowing. Now, first thing I want you to notice is that in the midst of our troubles, uh, he knows exactly where we are. Notice the Bible says, And he saw them. He commanded them to go to the other side in the ship, knowing the storm was coming, and they were obedient to his command, but the Lord never took his eyes off of them in the midst of their troubled waters. So God say to you today that uh, we may feel like Job, who said in Job 23, oh, that I knew where I might find him. Uh, there may be times in our lives that we don't feel like God's presence. We can't see him, we can't feel him, we can't touch him, we can't find him. It seems as if God's a million miles away and the Lord is not answering our prayers. Uh, but Job said, oh, that I knew where I might find him. And we find that Job did find him if you study the book of Job in its entirety. And uh, in essence, Job concluded in the closing chapters that he did find God and he found him in the midst of his trials and his troubles and his uh, tribulation and his heartaches and his sorrow. Remember, Job had financial struggles. He lost all of his livelihood. He lost all of his, uh, all of his flocks and herds and so forth. He lost his health. Uh, he lost his wealth. He lost the respect and dignity of his wife. And she said, why don't you curse God and die? He lost all of his family. And Job was about as low as a man could get. And in the midst of the deepest part of his life, the deepest season of his life, he couldn't find God. He said, oh, that I knew where I might find him. But when it's all said and done, Job concluded God never forsook him. He never uh, took his eyes off, eyes off of him. In fact, he concluded in chapter number 23 that God knew exactly where he was. And so I just want to just reemphasize this morning that though we go through troubled waters and we may feel all along, we may feel that our spouse, our family, our loved ones, our uh, closest friends and comrades have forsaken us and they're not able to help bear the burdens, I want you to know this morning and remind you that when we're going through troubled waters, even though we may not see him in the beginning of the trial and the suffering and the persecutions we're going through, God knows exactly where we are. He was not on the water at this time with him. He was still up in the mountain praying. But the whole time he was in the mountain, he was looking upon the disciples. He knew exactly where they were in the midst of their troubles. And never forget that in the midst of your troubles and the troubled waters and seas of life that you go through, he never takes his eyes off of us. I think about many that sitting on the sound of a horse have loved ones that are deteriorating with their health and they're seeing changes in them. And it breaks our heart to see someone that was vibrant in the ministry and vibrant with their health and had a heart to please God and to serve God. And they've given the majority of their life to the Lord. And it hurts uh, to think about their health and the fact that in reality, and though any of us sitting here today uh, could be in heaven before the sun set, and God forbid that anyone would be in hell who have never put their faith and trust in Christ or be playing religion or salvation. But we can all be dead and slip out into eternity before the sun sets. But the reality of it is that many of us are, have loved ones or ourselves are getting up in years and we know our days are numbered. Um, on our side of the family, um, most of our relatives have passed away in their 70s. I'm going to be 65 in a couple of months. Well, that didn't give me too many years ahead, and if that's the case, and of course, God's in control, although we did go to one of my uncles that was celebrating on Saturday his 90th birthday, so maybe the Lord will give me 90 plus years. I don't know. We'll see, but traditionally, if you take the average life expectancy, I probably wouldn't have a whole lot left, but I'm not worried about it because, I'm, a, as the old preacher said, I'm knowing where I'm going, and I got the hammer down, amen, and, but it's hard. It, it's difficult. If you have a, a parent or a child or a loved one or a comrade that has uh, fallen and uh, you, that to sickness or whatever, and they're facing uh, struggles, I just want to remind you this morning that when you're going through those troubled waters, God knows exactly where we are. Amen. Not with open wounds this morning, that's not my intent. Second, I want you to notice, if you would with me, please, um, in uh, verse number 48, uh, not only did he see them, and knew exactly where they were, but notice, if you would please, he saw them toiling and rowing. You say, preacher, what do you mean by that? He not only saw the disciples in their troubled waters in the midst of the sea, and I'll maybe later with a little more time get into it. They've been toiling all night, and they're in the midst of the sea. Uh, they should have had more than ample time to cross the sea. They have 
toil to the point of exhaustion and the waves are about to overtake them and Jesus saw them toiling in their labor. That means that they had been given it all they had for the majority of the night and had only made it halfway across the sea. It only made it uh, just a very short distance and they were given it all they had. But I want to just say to you this uh, morning, not only does he see where we are in our troubled waters, he sees our labor and our efforts. Um, sometimes people uh, can uh, labor and they have the thought in their mind, does anybody even notice what I'm doing? Do they even see the sacrifice? Do they even have an inkling of an ideal of what's taking place in my life? And sometimes the answer to that question is no, they don't. They, because there's personal family issues you have, there's personal struggles that you're going through that you haven't shared with anyone. And maybe it's uh, because it's extremely confidential. I understand that. Others, maybe because of uh, humiliation, others because of pride. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why uh, we don't share certain things with certain individuals and as groups. I understand that. But I'm just simply saying that sometimes if we don't know what all is taking place and some of the behind the scenes struggle, uh, struggles and troubles that you have, sometimes it is overlooked unintentional. Now somebody can say man right there. I know we're mostly ladies, but ladies can say man too. Um, you can raise your hand. Uh, you can say, sick him, preacher. Uh, you can say something this morning, all right? Um, but he sees her labor. They were toiling and rowing. They were working hard. They were giving it all they got. Why were they giving it all they got? Because they were obeying the Lord's command. He said, I want you to get in the ship, go to the other side. And they were doing everything in their power, even in the midst of what, in, from their perspective, was considering life-threatening. They were willing to die, they could have turned and headed back to shore. They could have gave up and said, this is too hard. Uh, there's no sense in doing this. It's an impossible task, but know the Lord and ask him to go to the other side. And they were giving it all they had to get to the other side, even in the midst of the storm. And so when we're in the midst of troubled waters, he never takes his eyes off of us. He saw them and he also saw them in their labor. He saw their work, their labor, their conflict. He saw their exhaustion. And he came to them. And the Lord never forsakes or overlooks. He never discredits our work and our labor uh, to him and to those who we work for, those who we honor. And I've had, and I want to be very careful, I very rarely like using myself as an example because um, I, I just don't. I don't want anyone feeling sorry or thinking that. You know, they, they just, whatever. Um, but Peggy and I don't take a lot of time off. We, a day here, a day there as we travel. Uh, then when I take off a little bit, when we get in, it's to work around the house. It's not to take a vacation. It's not to uh, lay back and stay in bed all day. Uh, in fact, I, I think uh, once or twice over the last 10 years, I might've slept till eight or nine o'clock because we didn't get in till five or six o'clock in the morning and our travels all night or something. Uh, it, it's extremely rare. Uh, and I'm not wanting anyone to feel sorry, but in somebody says to me, Brother Ellis, why do you do that? I'll tell you why I do it. I do it because God's calling me and I've got a motivation in my heart. I'm gonna stand before him one day and I don't think it's a sin to take off. I think it's a sin if you don't rest and follow the Lord along the way. But I will say this, I think there's too many people that are too wrapped up on vacations or too wrapped up on time off. Someone, uh, sometimes preachers will throw out, well, we don't want to sacrifice our family. If our families were that fickle, maybe we need to get some things set in order at home. Maybe I should say this to the, our missionaries and the preachers. <laughs> um, I preached on the difference between rest and laziness and slothfulness a few years ago. And two of the men and one of them was staff uh, came to him and said, when are you gonna start practicing what you preach? Uh, not that I was slothful or lazy, but that I wouldn't rest. Um, and I'm not saying we don't get any, I'm just simply saying he saw their labor, he saw their toil. And that's the most important one. And God will honor in due time. I'm going to have to quit there. I don't have time to get into the third one. Again, I'm just hitting these as we move forward. But I want you to know, God always sees us no matter where we are. He always sees our work and labor, even if it's not recognized by others. And sometimes it's not even recognized by those that are closest to us because they don't know our heart. And uh, But God knows.
and in due season you shall reap if you faint not, according to the scriptures. And uh, so God always rewards faithfulness. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. So TJ, give us.